Today we're going to talk about solving quadratics by graphing. This is one of three methods that you need to know for quadratics uh, for this year. There are a couple other methods that you'll learn in other math classes. So we've talked a little bit about when we have quadratics, we know we get a parabola and it can hit the x-axis. Those are considered the roots. Um, so where it hits the x-axis are x-intercepts. We can call those x-intercepts, zeros, or solutions. They're also called roots. So they have multiple names. You can have two roots, you can have one root, or you can have no roots. So remember that as we go through these. When we solve quadratics, the y, or the f of x, if we're doing a function rule, has to be equal to zero. That's very important. So you'll see some examples of that as we continue. So let's look at a basic um, one in standard form. So we have y equals x squared minus 2x minus 3. We would have to change that y to be equal to 0 to put it into solving form. So you remember when we're going into something we're solving, we're trying to find out where the x-intercepts are. So that's always when y is 0. That's why we set it equal to 0. So the first step, just like when we graph quadratics, we have to find the um, axis of symmetry, or the AOS, which we know is a formula x equals negative b over 2 times a's value. So let's do for this one. So for this particular one, our b is a negative 2, and our a is a 1. So a negative times a negative 2, because that's what our b is, over 2 times 1. We simplify that down. A negative and a negative gave us a positive, and then 2 times 1 is 2. 2 divided by 2 gives us 1. So we know that x equals 1. That tells us that's the axis of symmetry. Since we know that, we also know our coordinate of x is 1. To find the vertex, we then plug that value of 1 back into our formula. So we know that x is 1, so we're going to plug it back in. 2 times 1 minus 3. 1 squared is 1. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 minus 3. Then we're going to simplify that down. 1 and a negative 2, and then a negative 3 gives us a negative 4. Four. So we know our y value, or this together, equals negative 4. So this gives us our vertex, where our turning point is going to be. We can look at the problem and know that it's going to be opening up because this is a positive value. We can think about what this means. This negative 3 shifts things up and down. And then this middle value, our b value, takes into account moving things left to right. So let's go to our graph now and graph it. So we had x is 1, so we know that our AOS is 1. So I'm going to put a dotted line right down through where 1 is. And then we know our coordinate was 1, negative 4. So 1, negative 4, we have 1, 2, 3, 4. We have a spot right here that's our vertex. Now we know this is going to be going upwards or opening up. Now we will make our table. So if you make a little quick table, remember you can use points, any point that you want, but you want to make it kind of easy for yourself. If you are already working with one, we're going to pick zero and we're going to pick two for our first parts of our table. So zero and two, we plug that back into our formula or into our equation. Our equation was x squared minus 2x minus 3. We could do some quick calculation. Obviously, we plug in 0. Really easy to get that one. We get a negative 3. We plug in 2. We're also going to get a negative 3. We didn't have to even do any work for that one because we know that this parabola is going to be symmetrical. So if 0 is a negative 3, it was 1 away, 1 away right here then we know the other one's going to be 1 away. So we put our other one here. Well, that's not enough to hit our x-axis, our x-intercepts. When we're looking for our roots, we're trying to find where it hits on the x-axis. So we want to know when y is 0. Now we can plug in this equal to 0 and then solve for the x. It makes it a little bit harder because we have an x squared, so we have to do some factoring there, which is into another way that we're going to do this. but So we're going to pick another point. So we went to 0 and we went to 2. Now we could go to negative 1 here at this line and then go to 3. Those are going to be symmetrical. Negative 1 and 3. 
So if I plug that in, then I will see that I will get zero and zero. So now when we plot these at three, zero, we have a point that is on the x-intercept and at negative one, zero, it is on the x-intercept. So when we connect those, our parabola will look like this, but we can see now that we have a place here and a place here, and we can see when y's are zero, those are our x-intercepts. So these are our roots. So our roots for this equation um, are going to be x is negative 1 and x is 3. So when we write them as our solutions, we don't want to, um, we can write them as x is, but those are, it kind of confuses people with the axis of symmetry. We don't want to write them as negative 1, 3 with parentheses because that looks like a coordinate. So we can do this and make it into brackets. So erase those little things here. We can do this into brackets and to know that those are the roots, or you can write them as x is negative 1 and 3, as I've done here. So that is one way to solve with graphing. So we're going to try some other ways um, to show you and just see if you can get some practice with it. So this is example B. Um, we already have it in solving form. So you're going to go through the steps and go ahead and find the AOS, or axis symmetry, and the vertex, and graph it and see if you can find the solutions. So pause your video and try it here. So here we found our AOS and our vertex, negative one, then negative one, and negative nine. And when you graph it, when you start with your AOS and graph it, you may have to go a little extra. You notice that when you put in small numbers right next to it, it doesn't go up very far. So I had to go all the way down to two and negative four for it to actually equal zero. So then my roots are negative four, two. You can write them again in brackets. I always put the smaller one first and then the bigger one, just kind of in sequential order to make it um, make sense. And then you can see that we have found our roots. So this has two roots. This one has um, two roots. So let's go to another one and see um, what you can do. All right, try this one, same way, and pause the video and come back and check your work. So in this one, when you get your AOS, you have a negative two, and then you plug it in to get your vertex, you have a negative two, zero. So if we come over here to our graph, and I put the AOS on the, the graph and the vertex, I'll notice automatically that I already know the root. And the whole reason I'm doing this graphing, this method, is to find the root. So I don't really care what the parabola looks like or all the, the points or the table. I don't need to know anything else. I just need to know the root. So this one, because I already know the root, and I know that it's going to open up because I had a positive A, at, at some way it's going to open up. It doesn't really matter how it looks. I don't need a table. No table is needed on this one. I don't need to graph it properly. Um, I just need to know what the root is. And at this point, I know that the root is here at this point where my vertex is. So we always look for our x. So my root here is at this point. It's a negative 2. So when you're having ones like this and you know immediately this has one root, before we had ones with two roots, and this one has one, and you didn't have to really do a whole lot of work with that one. All right, let's try this one on your graphing calculator. So when you put this in your graphing calculator, you want to make sure that you go to your y equals. Um, even if this is not an x, if it's another variable, if they give you something, if uh, a word problem, it's h or t or something, use x in your calculator. Uh, Desmos is the same way. You want to always use x. When you put this in your calculator and... When you hit graph, you will see the parabola. All you are looking for is where the root is. Well, if you'll notice, you're looking for where does the parabola touch this x-axis. And in this case, it doesn't. Uh, it's up here. It does not have a root. So this is a no root, no roots, or a no solution for this problem. So doing a quick graph on the calculator is very helpful. All right, I want you to try this one and see what you get. Pause the video and come back and check your work. All right, so on this one, you see that you get an axis of symmetry that is a fraction, a negative fraction, and also when you plug it in, you get a vertex. You get a um, coordinate that's also um, a fraction. So I went ahead and changed these to um, 
decimal numbers so that you could see where you could kind of plot them. So when you go to your graph and you plot these, you're going to have to kind of eyeball where negative four and a half is, and then 15 and a quarter is a little bit past 15, negative 15 and a quarter. Now, the table that I made was pretty large because when I started noticing was when I did my small numbers or when I started, I had all my numbers kind of down here together and I needed to get up to where my roots were. Well, once I finally found where enough to be able to cross my x-axis, I noticed that my root is not on a direct coordinate. It's actually in the center of a coordinate. So this is a root, still a root, and this one is still a root. However, they're not um, perfect coordinates. So these are what we call integral roots. So they're in between two whole numbers. So they're integral roots. Now this one has two, there's two of them there. And the way we would do this is we would think about where this is. So this is zero and this is negative one. So this is actually between those two, or actually um, negative one. And so we think about what we're talking about. We're talking about x and we're talking about zero. So x is greater than or negative one is less than x and x is less than zero. So our root is between the two. So the other one we look over here, we have a negative eight and a negative nine for these numbers here, and it's in between those. So we can put our x's in the middle. Think about going from left to right. So we had negative nine and negative eight. And in this case, our x, same thing, and x is less than negative eight. So it's in between. That's how we would write our roots. So they're integral roots. All right, so our procedures, we need to make sure that we always put the equation in solving form, so y equals zero. We follow the graphing procedures that we know, find our AOS, our vertex, and then a table to have enough points so that we can see where our graph or our parabola is gonna cross the x-axis. And then we're gonna state those roots. Um, if we have roots, one root, we would just state one, no roots, you say no solution or no roots, and then two solutions, those two solutions. You can sketch it out to kind of see what it would look like. Using your calculator um, is very helpful as well. So here's some examples of what two roots may look like. Um, they can, there's more examples, these are just a few. So you could have two roots, one root or no roots, um, and what those would look like. So be aware of what those would look like. So when we were thinking about graphing, make sure that you follow the procedure as normal. Our next um, video is gonna go into our next um, way to solve quadratics.